Breaking news, we have a verdict. Six hours and 23 minutes of deliberations. The jury went back in there for less than a half hour and they now have sent a note saying they've reached a verdict. You can see folks gathering inside the courtroom, judges on the bench. Eva Benefield, Doug's daughter, is in the gallery. Um, on the judge is not on the bench. Excuse me, I, 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 I was seeing things. There's um, Eva Benefield live in the uh, gallery as folks are starting to gather. We have a verdict. This is the moment you see folks rushing into the courtroom. Um, there's a lot at stake right now. For Eva, she lost her mother. Nine months later, her father brought a woman into their home. That woman ended up shooting and killing her last surviving parent. And now it's judgment day. Is this jury going to say that Doug Benefield deserved to die? That this was in fact a justified homicide, self-defense, or will they convict Ashley Benefield? That is the question. There's Tommy uh, Benefield. He's been speaking to us throughout this case and even before the trial began. Um, he's now in the courtroom. Many members of the Benefield clan uh, have been there throughout. They've traveled. They don't live there. They've come from out of state to be there. Um, not an easy moment. Not an easy moment. They have counted the days. Um, since Doug was shot and killed by Ashley. And if you look at the other side, I don't think we've seen Ashley Benefield in the courtroom yet, but for her, number one, she knows what really happened here. She is the one person who actually knows. You know, the jury can figure it out from the evidence. You can have your opinion, I can have my opinion. Uh, Doug's family can have their opinion. But she is the only person on earth who actually knows what happened. And oftentimes I'll look at a defendant in the moment that a verdict is delivered to see that reaction, to see how they react to whatever the words are, whether it's guilty, not guilty, or perhaps guilty of something less than the top charge. But to see the reaction to me sometimes can speak volumes, not always, but sometimes it can. And for Eva, this has been really her world, her life. Both parents gone, but she's surrounded by family tonight, which is good, which is good. And she's trying um, her best to work through all this. It's a lot for anyone. It's a lot for anyone. Um, Rick King, Philip Dubé are still with us. You'll hear their voices. Um, Rick, this is the moment, right? This, is, this, is, this isn't easy for anyone on either side of this because no one knows what this jury is, is going to say. And, and Vinny, at the end of the day, man, like there's, there's, no, there's no solace for anyone. You know what I mean? Like Mr. Benefil is not coming back. Um, and while this is to give some closure to the family, you know, they're on the other side, somebody else is going to be hurting for, you know, for Ashley. So, I mean, this is, it's a tough, this is a tough place at any time in any trial. Philip Dubay, you called it. You said you wouldn't be surprised if this happened. It did happen. Um, I'm looking at, at, at the family. You can tell, you can see the nerves on their faces. They, they, they don't know. They don't know. You know, the, the, the words not guilty can be a big gut punch to a family because then they, they leave empty-handed. Their, their loved one is gone and they feel like they've gotten no justice. But this is the way our system works. Phil, put us on the other side of the, of the courtroom. What's it like um, for that defendant? What's it like for the person who has represented that defendant and knows that whether or not that defendant, you know, walks among the free or is locked up perhaps for the rest of her life, um, rests, rests in your hands. And this is the moment where the jury's going to tell you. Vinny, I've tried 140 cases to a jury in my career. And I can tell you, I don't care if it's a misdemeanor, a felony, a capital crime, with every verdict, I get butterflies. To this day, I can never guarantee whether or not a client will be set free or be found guilty. 
But what I can tell you is that statistically, Florida is a law and order state, and whatever verdict they reach will be just. They handpicked a jury of her peers, and whatever the verdict may be, will be the just outcome in this case. Prosecutors have entered the courtroom. They seem somewhat relaxed, right? So for, for prosecutors, you, you want to deliver justice for the people that you represent, the people of the state, but you also want to deliver justice uh, for the surviving family, and that family is, is seated behind them. That's a different type of pressure, though. It, it, it's, it's just a little bit different, I think, than, than the other side. Uh, and, and, and again, to me, this is the biggest part of this whole process. At the end of the day, in many of these cases, most of these cases, the only one who really knows the absolute truth is the defendant. And even if they testify, sometimes people will question, did they actually tell the truth? Did they tell us the truth? Were they lying? Right? That's always the, 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 the debate. It's the job of the jury to figure it out. But they actually know, Rick, every defendant actually knows whether or not they did it. The lawyers don't know. The lawyer can only base upon what your client has told you, what the evidence is. But, but really, the only person who really, really knows what happened at that moment is the defendant. That's that's true, Vinny. But uh, Philip used the word. He said he had he has butterflies after the jury trials or dur during at, at this moment during the trial. Butterflies is an understatement. I, I am at this point in the trial, like my stomach is rumbling. Like I'm, it's uh, I am terribly the anxiety that you feel because you know you spend you know you, you spend a lot of time with this person, and you know they say that. Uh, criminal law is bad people on their best behavior. So you meet people at their best, regardless of whether they're good or bad, you meet them at their best as their criminal defense attorney. And you're with them and you're walking with them through this entire process. And when you get to this moment right here, like this is that moment, like I'm like my stomach, even right now, and I'm not involved in this case, my stomach is, is rumbling. It is, it happens in almost every trial, right? Unless the jury's deadlocked. This moment does happen. And no matter how much you know it's gonna happen and you try to prepare for it, you can't. You can't prepare for this. No. I, I was recently uh, on, a, on a civil jury and that same tension was in the air for everyone in, involved in that courtroom. And, it, and there was a lot at stake there. It was an important case. But this is, this is literally life, life and death. This is freedom and, and no freedom. It's, it's everything. And for the Benefields and for Eva, it's, it's a matter of, okay, can I, my father's not coming back, but can I turn the page on all of this? Can I turn the page and say, hey, the person I believe is responsible, and she does, she absolutely does, we've had her on the show, will they be held responsible and accountable for their actions? And as we get ready, the door is opening, and here comes Ashley Benefield. This is an incredibly, and walking a little faster than she normally does, you can tell there's absolute nerves. And why wouldn't there be nerves? I would say, I don't know who would be more nervous, someone who knows that they're guilty or someone who knows that they're innocent. I don't know who would be more We're back on the record guilty, but let's listen. Versus Ashley Benefield, 2020 CF 3014. I've been informed there's a verdict prior to bringing the jury out. I did want to make this announcement. The jury has reached a verdict, and I'm about to bring them out so the verdict can be reviewed and published. I know many of you here in the audience have been here throughout the trial, and I want to thank you for conducting yourselves appropriately throughout the trial. I realize that the reading of the verdict can be very stressful, and it is likely that some of you will agree with the jury's verdict, and some of you will not. As sometimes happens, it may be that no one is pleased with the jury's verdict. Whatever your personal feelings are about this jury's verdict, I ask you to remember that these jurors were randomly selected from our community. They were thoroughly questioned by the court and lawyers for both sides. And they were selected from the larger group to hear this case 
because of their demonstrated ability to be fair and impartial. I've paid close attention to this jury and they have been attentive, observant, and focused throughout the trial. No matter how much you agree or disagree with the verdict, there are, no, there are to be no outbursts of emotion. Our judicial system, in fact our entire society, has relied on jurors to help resolve disputes for over 200 years. Their verdict needs to be respected even if you don't understand it or don't agree with it. Are you ready to bring in the jury? Yes, sir. All Jury, I understand you have a verdict, and we have a foreperson. Yes, we do. Ma'am, has the jury reached a verdict? Yes, we have. Is the verdict unanimous? Yes, it is. Would you please hand the verdict form to the deputy? We need to check it and make sure it's in proper form. Verdict appears to be in proper form. Madam Clerk, would you please publish the verdict? In the Circuit Court of the 12th Judicial Circuit, and in for Anson County, Florida, the State of Florida versus Ashley Benfield, case number 2020-CF3014. Verdict. We, the jury, finds as follows as to the defendant in this case. The defendant is guilty of manslaughter, a lesser included offense. Did Ashley Benefield actually carry a firearm? Yes. Did Ashley Benefield discharge a firearm? Yes. <clears throat> Did Ashley Benefield, as a result of discharging a firearm, cause death to Douglas Benefield? Yes. So say we all this 30th day of July, 2024, at Bradenton, Manatee County, Florida, Cheryl Forkerson. Would either like either side like the jury polled? State? No. Defense? <laughs> yes, sir. Members of the jury, you're now going to be polled. The clerk is going to ask each of you individually if this is your verdict and the verdict of the jury as a whole. Madam Clerk? Juror number 15, is this your verdict as well as the verdict of the jury as a whole? Yes. Juror number 20, is this your verdict as well as the verdict of the jury as a whole? Yes. Juror 21, is this your verdict as well as the verdict of the jury as a whole? Yes. Juror number 29, is this your verdict as well as the verdict of the jury as a whole? Yes. Juror number 33, is this your verdict as well as the verdict of the jury as a whole? Yes. And juror number 35, is this your verdict as well as the verdict of the jury as a whole? Yes. Thank you. Members of the jury, I want to thank you for your time and consideration in this case. I know that many of you have missed important work obligations and family obligations and other engagements that you had planned, as well as time with your families. But I want to thank you for being willing to give us your time and your attention and being observant uh, to this entire trial and serving as jurors and doing your civic duty. I have uh, paperwork that we're going to give you that will reflect your service as a juror, as well as a piece of paper from the clerk's office uh, documenting that each of you has been here for these number of days if you need it for work purposes. If you need some sort of other paperwork for work or anything like that, contact my judicial assistant and we'll be able to get that for you. I also want to advise you of some very special privileges that all jurors enjoy. 
No juror can ever be required to talk about the discussions that occurred in the jury room except by court order. For many centuries, our society has relied upon juries for consideration of difficult cases. We have recognized for hundreds of years that a jury's deliberations, discussions, and votes should remain their private affair as long as they wish it. Therefore, the law gives you a unique privilege not to speak about the jury's work. Although you are at liberty to speak with anyone about your deliberations, you are also at liberty to refuse to speak with anyone. A request to discuss either your verdict or your deliberations may come from those who are simply curious, from those who might seek to find fault with you, from the media, from the attorneys, or elsewhere. Bless you. It will be up to you to decide whether to preserve your privacy as a juror or not. Again, on behalf of myself, the entire judges of the 12th Circuit, thank you very much for your time and your attention during this trial. I now discharge you as jurors in this case and release you from any further obligations in this matter. You're free to go. Make sure you pick up your electronic devices. And please make sure that your notes stay with the deputy. They are going to be returned to me. They will be destroyed. No one will ever read your notes. Okay. Thank you. All right, you all can have a seat. The jury is out. State. Um, judge, I would ask you to remand the defendant at this point. Um, I believe she has a right to a PSI for sentencing, so I'm not sure she would waive that or uh, proceed with that. P do you want to PSI? Um, I think we'd prefer to have the PSI. I'll sign an order tonight for that. Uh, it's a late in the evening. My judicial assistant will reach out to both of you tomorrow to begin coordinating uh, a hearing, sentencing hearing. You could let her know how much time you need. Right now, the, the pre-sentence investigations are running a month to six weeks, so it'll certainly, the time for sentencing will be outside of that. Uh, but then you can let me know how much time you'll need. Um, let me direct myself, Your Honor, to post-trial release, if I can. Yes, sir. Under Youngston, um, I know that the Younghans, rather, I know that the court is familiar with the standard. Um, they stated in no uncertain terms, um, but if taken in good faith on grounds not frivolous but fairly debatable in view of the decisions of the Supreme Court, then the petitioner should be admitted to bail. And they set out for the trial court three factors. Um, the first, with respect to the appeal not being frivolous, I think by the court's own acknowledgement at two different points in the trial, uh, the court noted that the we were dealing with novel issues that the court had not seen before. Um, I think we certainly have good and sufficient grounds to appeal in good faith. The factors, according to Young Hens, Your Honor, is the habits of the individual as respect for the law. Ms. Benfield has no prior history of criminal activity, as the court knows. Her local attachments to the community by way of family ties, business, or investments. She lives here in Bradenton, has lived here for a while. Her mother resides here. Her child resides here. The severity of the punishment imposed for the offense, that is substantial. There's no denying it. And any other circumstance relevant to the question of whether the person would be tempted to remove herself from the jurisdiction of the court. Ms. Benefield, on every single occasion over the course of the life of this case, has appeared when requested. She has never once failed to meet any obligation pursuant to the bond that she's on. As a result, we ask that the court entertain setting a post-trial bond. Um, the only other thing that the court 
note noted in the young hand's decision was that it's axiomatic that the exercise of judicial discretion should never be arbitrary, capricious, or unreasonable, and where the discretion is exercised in favor of denying to a person a basic and fundamental right, the reasons for doing so should be sound and they should be clearly stated. So pursuant to Rule 3.691, post-trial release, Your Honor, we ask that the court admit Ms. Benefield to bond, continue her on the same bond, in fact. Um, and if the court is not inclined to do so, we ask that Your Honor stay the decision so that we can um, appeal directly to the second district. As the court knows, it's an accelerated uh, docket because of the nature of the motion, that is to say, the bond. Thank you. State, did you want to be heard? Judge, I object to any bond at this point. The potential sentence is 30 years. Um, while this defendant may have appeared at every court hearing, she was not convicted of the charge at the time. She has much more um, to at stake at this point, being convicted of this crime, and I would ask you to deny the bond. Any rebuttal? No, sir. Ms. Benefield, the jury having found you guilty of manslaughter with a firearm, we're going to remand you to the custody of the Manta County Sheriff. We're going to revoke your bonds where you'll be held pending sentencing. Ashley Benefield in custody, now a convicted killer. A convicted killer. Wow, what a moment. Um, inside the courtroom, the family of Doug Benefield obviously getting some sense of justice tonight. She's been found guilty of manslaughter. Up to 30 years is, in fact, uh, the potential sentence. We only have a couple minutes left here. We're short on time. Rick King, your reaction. Oh, I, I think it was coming. I saw that uh, the Mr. Uh, uh, Taylor, I think he said that the defense lawyer, he talked about it in his closing. He said, hey, did you're going you're gonna to be kind of you're going to be worried about giving a, a compromised verdict. He said she deserves more than that. She's either guilty of second degree or she's not guilty. And I think what they ended up with was a compromised verdict. Philip Dubé, your reaction. Well, unfortunately, it's a mandatory minimum of 11 and a half years, so the judge cannot go below that, I don't believe. Uh, what I do find to be sort of an, a wacky, inconsistent outcome is that the jury apparently did not buy self-defense. The self-defense would attach to the manslaughter just as it would to the murder. So uh, I'm kind of uh, uh, at with my wit's end here to try to figure out under which theory they found her culpable of the manslaughter. Uh, they had to find, obviously, that there was some type of sudden quarrel or heat of passion. Uh, but under the law, I believe it's deemed to be an unintentional homicide if it falls under the voluntary manslaughter umbrella. But because it was committed with the firearm, the greater time attaches to it. Yep. So for now, uh, looks like years. she's going to... Potential yeah. of 30 years. Big thank you. You guys really stepping up as you always do. Rick King, Philip Dubé, you are awesome. Thank you so much for helping us uh, bring this verdict tonight. Um, make sure you tune in. First thing tomorrow morning, Julie Grant is going to have all the fallout from this verdict. Thank you for staying with us. Have a great night. And as always, folks, please, please, please don't forget to hug the kids.